So this is the end result of Prince Deval from this video. So this is what we're going to be aiming for, and this will be how he turns out at the very end. Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Prince Deval from the Crimson Court. If you'd like to support the channel, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now onto the video. The first colour we're going to use is Citadel and the Fist on Red. I'm going to use this to do the armour plates. In general, there's a lot of red armour plates on Prince Deval. To give these a nice smooth layer of my fist on red. There's also a few little gemstones, like blood drop gemstones, dotted around on them, so you also want to paint up those. Get those the same colour too. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. He's got a fair old bit of gold around him, so we're just going to do all of these gold sections. Get these so we have a nice smooth layer of gold on each part. Really are impressed with the figures of the Crimson Court, every single one of them is so detailed, like really great pose, really great look to them, so probably be painting up the rest of them for a video soon too. Next up we're going to do a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown, I'm going to use this to do all of the leather straps. He's got a leather strap on each leg, and he's also got the straps on his inner arm, on his right arm. So you can do all of these with Bane Blade Brown. The one on his left leg isn't quite so noticeable really. You could probably get away with just painting that black with the rest of the leg, but if you do want to make sure that they're all nicely browned and leathered, then you want to paint that with the Bane Blade Brown too. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Rockarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the big bony spikes coming out of his back. You can hear any noise at the moment. This is... Linnet 2 is purring away and padding on my legs and headbutting the microphone at the moment, so I'll try and edit those out. Next up, we're going to be using Citadel Deepkin Flesh, and we're going to be using this to paint his skin. So you have the little bits on that left arm between the straps for his forearm armour, the name of which escapes me. You've got both upper arms, both hands and his face and you can see quite a bit of his neck as well, although that is quite a pain to paint so if you haven't put him together yet it might be worth painting up the neck before you do assemble him. He's got bits of hair and stuff like that that just makes it that little bit awkward to get a brush in there to paint it up. Next up is Citadel Iron Hand Steel. I'm going to be using this to paint up the blade of his sword and some of the little pieces, sort of the top and the bottom of that knife he's got in the scabbard at his hip. like so. Now I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. This is going to be to paint up the kind of filigree and the little fancy bits on his sword and around the guard on his hand there. I've also got some fancy bits on the scabbard too. Also I've used a little bit of this on the vial of blood on his back. Now we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Araman Blue. A very quick layer of this, we're just going to use this to do some of the little blood drop stones around him. This is going off the pictures 
of the miniature on Games Workshop site. So some of the gems and little blood drops are going to be blue. So the first shade we're going to use is Citadel Carrowbird Crimson. I'm going to use this to paint over all of the armour. And the armour plate gives you a slightly different tone to when you use Juchi Violet. But it does look really, really good on this armour. With the Carrowbird Crimson finished, we're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earthshade on all of the gold. This will give you a very dark kind of gold colour, and then you build up the highlights from that and give it a nice shine. But I think it does look really good in the recesses, it gives you that dark tone that you'd have on gold. Like so. Next up, Citadel Contrast Wildwood. I'm going to use this on the leather sections where we painted the Bane Blade brown, so all those pouches on his back, the scabbard for that knife, all those kind of areas. Little parts of the grip of his sword, too. Reichland Flesh Shade, we're going to give his skin. A reasonable coat of this, you don't want to pull too much on there and get it too dark, but you do want enough that it brings out the details, and then when you paint on those deepkin flesh and highlight layers, it'll bring out the paleness of the skin whilst keeping the shade in the recesses. Next we're going to use some Citadel Seraphim Sepia. This is just going to be to do the two bony spikes on his back and the one on his elbow so a very quick layer which is followed up by the even quicker layer of citadel drakenhof nightshade and this is going to be to do the few blue gems which he has on his body so you've got the one on his chest one on his scabbard and then the pommel of his sword as well next up citadel null oil this is going to be to do all of the silvery metallic so the sword for the most part, even the filigree and decorations, and the same on his scabbard too. Okay, so we return to the armor now. We're going to use Citadel and the Fist on red once more. I'm going to start applying this back to the armor plates. Now, when you're applying this, you want to think about where the light will be catching these armor plates and where it will be more shaded. So top edges are going to have a lot of Mephist on red. The undersides are going to have no Mephist on red. You're just going to have that shaded area where you've put the Carabair Crimson over it. And areas where you've got curves on those plates, you will have Mephist on red on the bits that are sticking out and shade on the stuff that isn't. So you'll be able to see that on his shin or the rotating video at the start of this one. Next up we're going to use Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet and we are going to paint about 50% of the area that we've just covered with Mephist on red with this. You also want to think about ridges as well and start expanding the highlights with the Evil Sun Scarlet along some of those ridges that will be catching the light hit, like you can see here on the, the vertical part of that groin plate. That really does give it the effect of light catching it. Next up, I'm going to use Citadel Wild Rider Red. We are going to use this to do some edge highlights on the armor plates. Skipped a little bit of it there because it was not actually on camera. But you can see doing the edge highlights and you want to pick out the ridges and the details with this too. It just makes all those edges and things stand out as though the light is catching them as he stood there. So, going to do another highlight on the armour. Usually, you only do the three layers once it's been shaded. 
but this time I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Troll Slayer Orange just to do some final highlights just to make those stand out and pop a little bit so we are going to pick out just the very edges of those highlights I mean, technically you could keep going on and on and on and add in more and more highlights to things if you wanted to and get a really smooth gradient but usually three will do me but I thought I'd add this extra fourth one just because it gives quite a great look to the armour make some of those parts stand out that little bit more I'm going to use some Vallejo black I'm going to go over all of the black parts on him so you've got his hair his cloak, his boots, the material that he's wearing underneath his armour as well, be it trousers or whatever, on his legs. So you want to make sure you give these a good smooth coat of black for when we start applying the highlights to them. That's a very small miniature. It's a really good miniature for practising highlights and things like that on because you've got loads of different materials, loads of different bits sticking out here and there. And you really can have a great time highlighting this miniature. Next up a little bit of Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the areas that just use black on. So again like you did with the red when you're highlighting that, think about where the light is going to be catching the material and the shoes and that kind of stuff just to make sure that you're not getting any of the highlights on the underside to make it look a bit strange. You really do want to have all of those highlights on the top surfaces of the materials. Now it's time for a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We we'll use this to do the final highlight to all of those areas we've been working with the black and the German grey. And this is mainly going to be to do edge highlights. And this just makes those sections stand out and give you that kind of edge and detail to it so that you can see all the creases and curves and that kind of thing. The kitten has just come to join me on the chair. So I apologize if there are any noises in the next few moments. Now it's time for Citadel Rakar Flesh. I'm going to reapply this to the bony spikes on his back. So you want to be doing this in kind of vertical streaks really. The very very end of them, the thin end of them, you want to paint those up almost a solid Ricard flesh. But near the top you want to have it brush strokes going vertically down them so that you have that, or lengthways down them I should say, so you have those streaks and you also have those little grooves between the highlighted sections. Next up is Citadel Ushabti Bone. You're going to paint about two thirds of the spikes with this. You want to do the same kind of brush stroke so it doesn't really matter too much near the bottom, but you do want to have vertical or lengthway strikes up by the top there. You can also carry on the highlights at the top a little bit further up than you have done on the main body of those spikes too. Finally on these parts we're going to use Citadel Screaming Skull and it's going to be to do some final edge highlights and highlights on some of those streaks on the tip of the spikes just to give them a nice bright finish. Now we are working on the gold, so we're going to start with Citadel Retributor Armour once again. Like you have done with the red and the black, you're going to highlight this mainly in the areas that are going to be catching the light. So you do have a lot more on this. You can also think about where light would be reflecting as well, so you're going to get lighter shades on the undersides on this. Not completely lighter shades, but it will be reflecting light from different angles and things like that. So... If you have details on the underside, like the underside of that skull on his waist, then by all means highlight with the Retributor armour. 
and then we'll highlight the top edges with Citadel Liberator Gold. So on this, you want to be doing about 50% of the area that you've just done with the Retributor Armor. When I say 50%, I mean on the top surfaces. You don't want to be using this too much on the bottom surfaces. Maybe the odd little bit, like a little tiny reflection here and there. But nothing too major. This will start lightening the gold and give it that really good shine that you can see in certain parts when the light catches it. The final highlight for this, we are going to mix a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold, and we're just going to use this to kind of do edge highlights and a few little detail parts. The Model Air Chrome lightens it enough and has enough pigment that it'll make it give it a really, really good shine. So you can make all those details and those edges stand out with little to no effort. Next up, Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to start reapplying this to the skin. So again, same as before with the lighting, think about the light coming down from above. You want to be highlighting it like that so you can have the shade under the cheekbones and under the eyebrows. A little bit under the nose. So you're going to be trying to get the skin colour back onto the skin without going too wild in the areas that would be shaded naturally. So we're doing some horizontal lines across his head there to make his brow look a little bit furrowed. Now we're adding some Vallejo white to the deepkin flesh. And you're going to do about 50% of the highlights that you've just done on the top surfaces, just to make those stand out. As I said earlier, it is a really great miniature for details and stuff like that. You've got some nice sections of skin with those clawed hands. You've got some really nice ornate armour with the gold and the red. You've also got the cloak and some material on the trousers and the shoes. And the hair as well where you can do different highlights, so it is a great model to practice quite a few different techniques. Going to add a little bit more white now and do the final highlights to the skin. We're using a really thin brush here and we're just doing kind of thin line highlights on certain areas just to make those details stand out. So he has that quite foul looking pallid flesh. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White just to paint his eyes. As always, dragging the brush from the nose outwards so that you get the lengthways kind of effort on his eyeballs. We're also going to do each of the teeth with some Vallejo White too. I'm going to use some Vallejo Red Wash. and This is going to be used around his eyeballs. I want to give them sort of like where well, you'd have the darker skin. I want to make that quite red and quite grumpy looking. Also go around each of the fingernails too and just put a little bit of this at the base of each fingernail and under the nail as well if you can get it in there just to add a little bit of colour to the hands. Now it's Citadel and my fist on red and we're just going to work on these red gemstones. I'll link up away to paint these here that can give you the round gems and the blood drop gems too i'm using evil sun scarlet to highlight here in the video i think i use the reds and then add what more and more white to it both give very similar but slightly different effects i'm going to use some wild rider red just to do a final highlight before we use the white Now we are using just a little spot of pure Vallejo white just to do a little line highlight down one side of each blood drop and a little spot on the very top part of it where it'll be catching the light. 
So you'll be doing the line highlight down one side, a little spot on the top on the opposite side. Now we're going to use some Citadel Araman Blue, and the Araman Blue, we're just going to re-highlight these blue gemstones, so we're doing down one side and then curling that underneath. Then we are going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Araman Blue. We're going to do the same again, but probably about half the amount that we've just highlighted. I'm going to use a little bit more Vallejo White mixed in. And we're just going to do another little highlight to each of these gems. But we've got 50% of the previous layer once more. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White Pure just to do a tiny little highlight on the long edge like we have done on the previous ones. And then we're going to do a spot highlight on the top right. Now it's a little bit of Citadel Thondia Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight the areas that we covered with Baneblade Brown, then what Citadel Wildwood Contrast. Once more, think about where the light's going to catch these, and also think about where they will have been scuffed as well. If he's wearing these around his waist, what's going to catch when he like sits down or moves around? Are they going to scrape against walls, that kind of thing? And start applying the Thondia Brown to the areas that you think would be most worn. We are adding a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown to the Thondia Brown. I'm just going to do some highlights on the pouches and things. Now when you're doing your vertical edges and you want to be going to do horizontal brush strokes, and when you're doing horizontal edges, you want to be doing vertical brush strokes, and this will give you that rough look as though the leather is scuffed and chafed. And you can add the odd thin line to any of these sections just to Give it that look as though there's been a long scrape against it, maybe a knife or something's been dragged across the leather. Now I'm going to add a little bit more Balor Brown to the previous mix, just to lighten that up that little bit more. And do the same again, but to a lesser extent, so you get more of these kind of little scrapes and scuffs on the leather. Finally going to add a little bit of Citadel Rackarth Flesh to the mix and just do the final scuffs and highlight those with that. These will be areas that have had deep scuffs. They've gone down to that kind of fluffy leather that you get underneath the smooth outer layer. Now, Citadel Iron Hand Steel. I'm going to use this on the blade. It's got that nice blood groove running down the middle, so you want to avoid that. Leave the null oil in that blood groove. And then just do the blade's edges on either side. Next up, a little bit of Vallejo Modeler Chrome. I'm going to use this to reapply some colour back to those nice decorative parts on the sword and highlight some of the bits that we've used the Iron Hand Steel on. But it's an excellent colour to add some really bright highlights if you want to. Painting it up and down the edge of the blade as well, which will just give it that nice shine, make it look that little bit extra sharp. Finally, we're going to use some Citadel Blood for the Blood God technical paint. We're just going to do a few little thin streaks of this across the blade. As though someone's been chopped or speared by it. There's like little splashes of blood running down the blade. I'm also going to use some to run down the blood groove down the middle. And just generally 
a few slashes and splashes curving left to right so bottom left to upright on the blade and that is the final thing so we've on to the finished miniature really pleased with how he turned out some cracking details as i say it's a really really good miniature to paint really pleased with how he turned out thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below thanks very much if you like the channel and enjoy the content and you'd like to support me my coffee and patreon pages are linked below thanks very much <laughs>